Hey everybody, Tanya from Shooting Star SVG back and tonight I am going to show you how to create a layered SVG in Affinity Designer. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on like and subscribe below as that does keep me motivated to continue making these videos so that way you can grow your business and your I had previously done a video on how to create layered SVGs in Inkscape, and I thought I would walk through the same process in Affinity Designer. And again, I will reiterate there are two ways to create a layered SVG effect when you are creating SVGs with multiple colors, and so I'm going to walk you through that today. Um, each of them have their pros and cons, but I mainly just want to touch on the fact that when you're using heat transfer vinyl, or as we all know, when and call it uh, HTV, it tends to shrink. So using the puzzle piece um, method, which is what I call it, or method two, um, may not be as effective or uh, productive for somebody using HTV. However, it could be just fine for somebody using regular vinyl. Um, so I'm just gonna walk you through both the methods. You can try them both out when you do your end products. Um, and basically, we kind of assume that people understand how to use the Cricut and Silhouette software where they can move forwards or backwards. I'm going to show you how to do the same and I'm also going to show you uh, what the test file looks like in Silhouette Studio at the end um, as far as the proper cutting so you can show that that works well at the end. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and head on over to my computer screen without further ado. Okay. So you can see here I have this pumpkin outline, SVG, and this is the same example that I used walking through Inkscape. Um, we're just going to be doing some different things here. So um, to separate this, you are just going to select it, and I'm just going to have my nodes turn on here. Um, and then you're going to go to uh, Layer, and you are going to go to Geometry and you're going to click on divide, all right? And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take all those little white spaces and it's going to break it apart into separate shapes and leave that black background of the pumpkin, okay? And so I'm just going to take this background and I'm going to color it red just so you can see all these pieces. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and color all of this in, group that, and I'm going to change this back to black, all right? So you can see when I move this away, we just have the black background. Now if we're using option one, we would be done at this point in time. Um, you can go ahead and save your SVG and be on your way. Um, some people utilize this technique for layering just regular vinyl as it is a little bit easier as well. It really just depends on personal preference. That way when you miss, when you're lining up with your registration marks, it's not a big deal because you don't have any white space or open gaps because layering does sometimes take a little bit of effort and practice, okay? So if we were doing the other puzzle piece method, what we would do is... I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this now. We would take this layer and we would duplicate the selection to keep that color in the background. So we're going to leave that right here at the top here on the layer. And then we're going to go to this group and we're going to ungroup it. Okay. And then we're going to select our stem and our black bottom. You could do this by clicking on the outline or you can go over to the layers panel and click on that and I prefer to click on the layers panel because I know I'm not going to miss. And then you will go to layer and you're going to go to geometry and you're going to click on subtract. Okay. And you can see here that's going to remove that stem from the um, black pumpkin and start creating that outline. Okay. So now we're just going to drop this black portion down below and we're going to do the same thing with the orange section. Okay, select both layers, then you're going to
gonna go layer. Whoops, I forgot a step. So with these, this is just a group right now and you are going to want to make sure that you have everything um, combined. So I'm just going to ungroup that real quick and I'm going to click on create a compound path. And now when I click on both of my layers, I have the subtract option, okay? Now we're left with our two groups. Our first group being the colored group and our second group being the outline, okay? So I can just turn that layer on and off so you can see that I didn't really have to move it, but um, that would be your quote unquote puzzle piece technique, okay? And for a lot of people who are just starting out, they might prefer this or maybe more advanced user. It really just depends. But again, the thought process is that, you know, um, people should be comfortable enough with their software that they can do these very simple breaking of the compound pass and then recreating them and also doing the subtracting techniques, okay? Um, and similarly, for you to go backwards, um, from this outline, if you decide that this isn't something that you want to do, then you would just go and click on your um, outline layer and you would go to layer and you would go to geometry and you would, come on, and you would click on divide, okay? That's going to divide everything up again and then you're just going to go to layer and you're going to create a compound path and then that is going to break bring everything back together for you, okay? But what we're going to do is I'm going to back out of that and just leave it as the outline and the colors and I'm going to go to file, export, SVG and I mean there are some, I'm just going to do SVG for export and I'm going to say whole document and click on export and I'm going to save this as pumpkin test SVG2 and save and I had to reset my computer a minute ago so we'll wait for Silhouette Studio to load up and I'll come back. I have Silhouette Studio opened up. I'm just going to go ahead and open up this test SVG here that we just created in Affinity Designer. It came out super tiny. I'm gonna look at my document setups Here's the beauty of SVGs is I can go ahead and change this canvas size to a 12 by 12. And I can click on this guy and just expand him out. And when I click on send, you can see all the beautiful little cut lines right there, okay? Everything's good to go. And if I just click on ungroup, I'm able to move this outline out so that way I can create my registration marks and layer it up. Okay, so that's really all there is to it. Um, pretty simple and straightforward. Really, again, it all just depends on personal preference as far as um, what you want to do. And if you do decide to create the solid background with the colored pieces, you may want to consider including in your uh, zip file some instructions on how to subtract in Silhouette Studio or Cricut Design Space, whatever they're using. So that way, if the end user does want to create the second option or the puzzle piece effect, they're able to do that. But for the most part, people are pretty smart and can do that on their own. Um, so yeah, that's all I got. If you all have any questions or comments on these methods, you can go ahead and drop a comment below or head on over to the Facebook group and join up where we are creating a community of like-minded individuals who are looking to grow their business. Um, and, you know, as always, I'm providing this content for you guys so you can be successful. I really find a lot of joy in that and being able to help you guys on your journey. So, um, yeah, if you haven't already and you got something out of this, go ahead and click on like and subscribe below as that does keep me motivated to continue making these videos so that way you can grow your business and change your life. Um, yeah, I guess I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good night.